It's great to be here. Um, so, let's go. When the TEDx organizers first invited me here um, to give the talk today, they sent me the 10 TED commandments um, to help me prepare. I really didn't like the third one. Make the complex plain. Why? I mean, personally, I, I think simplicity is just boring. But, you know, I've got a lot of reasons. Um, complexity is all around us. Our world is not plain, it's complex. And it's like that for a purpose. Complexity works, and plainness usually doesn't. But also, when we take something that's complex, when we try to simplify it, we usually oversimplify it. We lose the essence of what we're talking about. So, then our arguments are completely worthless. Let's take, for example, a cake. A plain cake. It's probably very tasty. If you add just a bit of complexity to the cake, you change it, it becomes something else. It becomes a birthday cake. If you take something away from the plain cake, if you take away some human labor, some heat, you get something that's not really a cake. That's what usually happens when you oversimplify. It talks, complexity also makes us safe. I say, for example, two earthquakes in Japan, one in 1923, completely leveled the city of Yokohama. If you take the last earthquake in 2011, it was a bit it, a bit of a higher magnitude, but still, it only destroyed about 10% of the buildings in the most affected regions. And why is that? That's because complexity makes us safe. The buildings were complex. They weren't built as rigid structures. They were built as something that's able to react to the earthquake. It's able to move with the earthquake. It moves left and right and vibrates. And because of that stress, it doesn't build up. It doesn't fall down. And today I learned that building the trains is also complex. It's nice. But you don't have to be an engineer or a baker to build complex systems. Actually, nature is the best builder of complex systems out there. If we take, for example, the round one, its nervous system is relatively simple. So it has 7,000 synaptic connections, and it's good enough for the world. So it lives. It finds food, lives in different environments, no problem. But compa compared to our own brains, it's incredibly simple. We have a hundred trillion connections, and in our brains emerges everything that makes us human. So, because of these connections, we feel love, we are conscious, we ask ourselves, why are we here? And certain people have an obsession with complexity as well, just because of this. If you ever, if you ever want to oversimplify something that nature has built, um, you just don't get it. So let's take the Antarctic food web. As you can see it's quite complex. If you take a few species out of the food web, all the other species will be affected, but they will survive. They don't depend on just one source of food but more. Now, if you take one species from the simple food chain on the right, that is actually taken from a primary school textbook, if you take just one species away, everything above it will die. Unsurprisingly, there are not many food chains like this in nature. That's because reality is always complex. Simplicity is fiction. So, if everything is complex, why, why do we simplify at all? It, it seems that although our brains, brains are incredibly complex, they weren't built to understand complexity instantly. So, we're very good at simplifying, we're very good at abstracting, at finding patterns. It served us great in evolution. But today, we're facing many problems that cannot be reduced to simple parts anymore. So we need something else. So complexity is difficult, difficult to understand, and I'm dealing with aging. Aging is, well, it's, it's an enormous thing. So it's biology, 
it's our environment, it's how they interact, it's our technology. Everything together leads to our aging. So, in, we have about 50 trillion cells in our bodies. Each cell has 25,000 genes, makes about 100,000 proteins. These proteins interact. And they build the basic processes that, makes us, that make us alive. So, how to deal with that? How to deal with something so complex that you can't really grasp it? In science, what people usually do, and in this case, people have done, is you observe your problem, try to find correlations. If you find them, you propose theories. So, in aging, what scientists have done, they've taken cells from young people, tissues from old people, they compared them. And what they found out is that the number of damage of dysfunctional cells in older people is much bigger than younger people. And that each cell, each dysfunctional cell, is much more damaged than each healthy cell. So, they see to the proposal of the theory. Aging is caused by lifelong accumulation of damage. This is one of the leading theories in aging research. So, you can't really help yourself with just the theory. You have to find some mechanisms that take you from your theory and to what you're actually researching. So, this is just a very simple model of uh, the damage accumulation theory. You take your environment, you take your cellular metabolism, and these create together reactive oxygen species. So, ROS molecules, that's what we call them. These molecules are oxidizing agents. So what they do is they oxidize the lipids, the proteins, the DNA of your cells, and they impair the cellular function. And in time, when you have enough damage, you get a dysfunctional cell. When one cell is dysfunctional, it likes to share its dysfunction with its neighbors, so it just gives them a few proteins and neighboring cells can also become dysfunctional. And when there are enough dysfunctional cells in your tissue, in your organ, it gets diseased, and finally you die. So, what scientists also knew is that cells have their own mechanism to find, uh, to actually find this oxidation. They're called cellular antioxidants. And the cell produces quite a few, it produces them constantly, but obviously it doesn't produce them enough because damage still accumulates, we still age. So, the idea is that you supplement them. So, you make more of them available, you slow down, you change oxidation, and you get a healthier cell because less damage accumulates. So, um, tonight, if you want to look at your yogurt drinks or your, your beauty creams, you're going to be full of antioxidants. And this is why. This is why they put them in. So, what actually happens when we put this to the test? Well, it doesn't work. So, scientists have hoped that they would create mice that would be healthier, longer lived. Um, but they weren't. They weren't. They, 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 were, they had a bit less damage, but no, no healthier mice, no longer lived mice. So, what happened? So, what happened is complexity. Um, the model that I just showed you was wrong. It was too simple. The cell is not static. The same as with the structures that the Japanese build, so the earthquake with structures, the cell can react. So it senses how much antioxidants you actually put into the environment, and if there is a lot, it can reduce its own production. So this is what also might have happened in these experiments. Supplemented antioxidants, a lot of them, the cell completely stopped its production. In the end, you haven't really achieved something. So, it's one reason. But there's another reason. This is actually aging as far as we know it today. So, these are all the different processes. This is everything that we know put in one simple chart. And as you can see, my model that I presented before was really incredibly simple to the complexity that is here. So, when people expected to see healthy mice. They didn't take into account any of these other processes. Even ROS molecules that I told you before, that they oxidize their uh, proteins and DNA. Well, 
but they're also incredibly important in the cell cycle. So if you change the amount of ROS, if you stop it from oxidizing some of the parts, we're actually changing the cellular cycle as well. So nothing is as simple as it seems right away. And so antioxidants don't really work for aging. But it's not all bad news. Um, we have ways of actually slowing down aging. We all know them. Um, they're simple, they're on the market. Um, and it's, it's healthy food, less food, moderate exercise. If you do all this, and you, maybe you have a bit of luck, you will add 10 years to your healthy lifespan. So, you might say, well, there are simple solutions. But they aren't. They aren't really simple. Um, they might be simple because we all can do them, but their effects are incredibly complex. See, the food that we take, the, the food that we eat, and the exercise that we do, they don't just affect one of the processes in the cell. They affect almost all of them at the same time. And if we want to stop aging, if we want to solve any complex problems that humanity is changing today, that humanity is facing today, we have to embrace complexity.